Hello everybody, this is Phil Willits from Phil's Art. Um, I thought I'd introduce, after the, looking at the pencils, I thought I'd introduce inks and um, using ink with watercolour. Now that's the, the ink I use, this is a waterproof ink and here are the different pens that I've acquired over the years, that's a very old one. Um, dip pens. I noticed somebody on YouTube was talking about a dip pen and they f forgot to do something or they f failed to do something and that is when you use a dip pen you dip it in and you don't put that on the paper otherwise you'll have an awful mess you just you go like that and remove the surplus and then if, it, if it's writing properly then you can um, use all sorts of interesting lines and texture and this is why a lot of people still like to use dip pens when they're um, doing uh, artwork. Now there are lots of other things that you can use and that is a bamboo bam bamboo um, pen and that is just an ordinary piece of matchstick. The bamboo pen I've made this myself I don't know whether you can see and I sanded that round there's two shapes one like that and then another like that and then that produces that nice shape there then you drill a hole and you cut that groove through using a a knife like that or a very sharp knife to cut the way through there and that produces a channel now, they are, if it's a miss, to be honest with you, you have to make sure that it's uh, well-seasoned bamboo. This piece of bamboo is a lot softer than that, and it doesn't hold the, the points very, very well at all. But anyway, I'll try this bamboo. As I say, it's quite um, difficult because I'm using an, an upright piece so that you can see, whereas really you should be doing it flat, and it flows a lot easier flat. But again, you dip it in, and you just gently move it out over and then and that produces sort of a quite a nice texture like that it's not really working an awfully awfully well that one isn't as i say it's a lot of it is hit and miss with bamboo pens really sometimes they work really well other times they don't well, that's not too bad i suppose that's about that's, those are bamboo pens and as I say, you can also use a stick. And some people use these, the, the, the big matches, because they're, they're that much bigger. And they're that, they're that much bigger. Um, like you can see there, rather than the ordinary, ordinary ones. And you literally get a, a knife like that. And there is a matchstick, and you literally cut it like that, and then cut the other edge like that, and to try to get a point on it. Um, I'll just show you that. I think you can see that. Uh, to, and then you, you, you dip it in. As I say, it is hit and miss, but it does flow very well very often. And there's, you can use a stick. Again, that is a, a, a point with a stick. And these do work very well because it's, all, it's like... It, it's... Well, that, one, that isn't very good at all, is it? I'll go back to this one. Because you can use it as a... Almost like charcoal. And you can... Go like, it's a very interesting texture. And you can use it like charcoal. But as I say, it is hit and miss. Sometimes they work really well. Other times, like this other one I've just tried, it, it doesn't work well at all. And last of all, there are obviously pens. Now this is a um, one of my uh, bags that I use uh, or take around. And I put um, different pens and what have you in there. And there are pens like this. And those are, those are ink pens. They're usually not waterproof. And you load them in like that. 
and I, and I always keep another um, spare one in the back that, that's nearly all empty I, I'll see if it's, there's any ink in that one and of course then you can write it's almost like a, a fountain pen really but they, it, it does give a very thin line compared to the matchstick the matchstick gives quite an interesting line so those are all the different pens. One of the other things that I, I will say is that's for sharpening or clear, cleaning your nails. It's a nail file, uh, but it's just sandpaper. And I have found that very often if you cut it with the Stanley knife, the, the points, I'll just wipe that off, and you can actually... Um, make, sh make the point even sharper by using that and very often that sort of really makes it quite good rather than keep on using the Stanley knife or the, 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 the razor knife to, to keep sharpening it just gradually, if, if, if it goes blunt just sand it with that and it, and it should or it usually does work very well ok well, what I'm going to do now we're going to move on and I'll remove this paper and I'm going to do a drawing using ink and I shall use the stick, a match stick, not a not a uh, not a pen, not a not a dip pen, but just a stick, and we'll do, draw this out, and then we'll do a watercolor. So you can see that it just produced quite an interesting texture. It can be a little bit rough and ready, but I think that does help to enhance the painting very often. So. Um, that's all for for moment. We will be back and we'll start to do this drawing here. Okay, thanks for listening. Hello there, welcome back. Now here's the the drawing that I've done. It's on water colour paper. Um, it's 140 pounds, and I think it's um, it's sort of a roughish surface. And there's my pen, an ordinary, which is just a stick, which is one of these match matches that we've sharpened to a point and then stuck in the end of a bit of old bamboo hopefully it's going to work all right but what i shall do is i shall just carry on to give you some idea and then i probably will stop and finish drawing and then we'll come back and we'll we'll, we'll finish it off with the watercolor but i'll just start i'm dipping it in wiping the surplus surplus off and we'll start at the top as I say, it's sloping up so that you can see. Really, you need to need to have it flat. It's going to be a lot easier to flat. But we'll just we'll just start. And we'll just put lines there. To the chimney. Again, it's not working too wonderful, but we'll carry on. As you can see, it's quite a rough mes method of doing it, but that does enhance the drawing very often when when it's finished with the with the um, with the watercolor paint. In actual fact, it's it's quite bad, really. This is doing the windows coming along there. Doing the texture of the roof. As I say, it's very much like charcoal. It gives the impression of being a charcoal drawing, really, in a way. And we'll just do that, put the windows in, the roof, so, actually in fact I'm going to try, I'm going to try this one, it's not, um, it's a bit better,
Right, okay, let's let's go back to this one. And we'll just um, carry on. In many cases, it's, it's a lot easier, really, doing watercolour. Like, we're, we're using the pen. Because it sort of um, helps you to know where to put the different um, lines and what have you. We just carry on. Just do that, the texture on that. And we'll just do the windows there. So we just carry on like that, put a figure there, that's part of a doorway. As I say, you haven't really got to be too fussy. It's good because you can't really be too fussy with it, with with it because of the the, the actual the actual um, texture of it. Let me carry on, put another figure there. Curbs round there like so. And you just carry on as we're doing here, like that, put another, put a small window there. And, um, it's better. It's sort of working not too good, but not too bad, if you know what I mean. It's and then the tree is, there's a tree there, if I remember rightly. You can get my reference, yes. And there's a bit of a bush there. So we'll just... To the bush like that and there's a tree there put another window there and something there Okay, put another figure crossing the road there. As you can see, it, 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 it's, it's quite an interesting um, thing to do, and I do advise you to have a go at doing it. Um, but you've got to be aware that it, because it's sort of like charcoal as you're drawing it, you're not going to get wonderful 
detail um, as you do it and that's really part part of the uh, beauty of using a stick um, as you're as you're doing it now I put a if I remember right because this is a picture from the Cotswolds that I took when I was on holiday there some I think it's now about a year ago or two years ago um, and we went round the corner and I saw this picture here and so I took a photograph of it and so that's what I'm using and when I come back I'll let you know what the, the name of the village but I, I, I forget it now I forget what the what it was but I'll uh, when we come back to do the watercolour I'll uh, I'll do it well, I, th I think I'll carry. I'll carry on. I, I was going not to not to bother um, and finish it finish it up, but it's pretty well um, finished, really. I'll have a look. That, that's the telegraph telegraph pole. Uh, funny enough, very often telegraph poles make interesting um, interesting parts to the picture, and the final cottage there was a cottage here up this corner yes you can see that still and then there was a another tree up the roof and that literally just a great big bush here and if I remember right there was um, a big old-fashioned gentleman's residence here and that was the beginning of the wall of it And we'll just carry on. Nearly finished. As I say, it's very, very quick. In actual fact, the quicker you are with it, the better it is. Because um, it stops you from fiddling. And everybody knows about watercolour, how easy it is to, to fiddle. And sometimes you can spoil the painting by, by, by it. And there were the, the railings there. As I say, I think we'll leave it at that. There was a path there, and I will. There was a, a shadow as well over here, so I'll just do that, and then we'll I'll leave that. But you can see it's quite a, an interesting texture, um, and as I say, it's, it's it's well worth having a go at and try and do it. Okay, well that's. The, the the pen and, and ink work done on that I shall probably just check over different things that I've done and then we'll come back and I'll, we'll start we'll carry on with the watercolour to complete it okay see you later hello there um, when you get to this stage make sure that it is actually dry the ink and it's best to use a kitchen a bit of a kitchen towel um, and just dab over and make sure that it's all, it is all dry. Now the way you have got the where, where I've got the camera, it, camera, it is a little bit out of proportion because I'm having to do the picture at an angle. Now the picture itself is, as I said, it was from um, the Cotswolds, and it was it's called Burford, and it's a lovely, lovely um, Cotswold village. Lots of shops there, it's well worth going. The only snag with it, to be fair, is there is an awful lot of traffic that drives through. But that's the problem of, uh, of the modern world, I'm afraid. But anyway, let's begin the painting. Now, I'm going to use light red, burnt umber, raw cinnamon, Payne's grey, and um, maybe a few more other colours, um, but uh, in, uh, uh, Elizabeth in crimson. But uh, we'll, we'll, we'll start anyway. Now, as I said before, this is quite an easy way of doing a watercolour because you've got it all drawn out. And you've only really got to fill, fill the colours in. And so what... And you can... Normally you start a watercolour, you start from the top and work down. But when it's like this, you, you can start anywhere you like. So we'll mix... I'll use this brush here, a three-quarter inch brush. And we'll start, and I'll mix. Seeing it's the Cotswolds, 
we'll start by using a mixture of raw cinnamon and a little bit of burnt umber to try to give you that Cotswold look of the buildings. Um, now I'm just putting a light a lighter wash over it leaving the windows I've got um, some stonework around the side of them so I'm leaving that like that making it nice and loose bringing it down here like that and trying not to go over these these buildings here again the top one there as I say it's it's very much um, doing this sort of work it's very much trying to keep it as loose as you possibly can but not without uh, it wants a certain amount of detail so we'll go down there and the gable end on that roof, or that, that building, and we'll carry on there. I'll, I won't bother too much with those windows. And we'll just building there at the bottom. And there was actually another building there which I missed out, but never mind, I'll just put it something like that. And then uh, there is another building on the, over the other side of the road, the chimney, there. Like so. Let's just wash the brush. Now we'll do the, the roof. And the Cotswolds roof is sort of a slaty colour, or they were at this particular area and so we'll just do that as well there there and that building that's stone stonework there and the road we'll just um, a very light wash over the road to start with As I say, we're just filling in at the moment, and the sky, probably using some cobalt blue <coughs> and a touch of Payne's grey, and we'll start. It was quite a, a dull sort of day. Get a bit darker there. Maybe just dab a few leave that for the moment, see what it looks like. And then we'll just do the trees, then we'll have to um, let it dry for a bit while we put the shadows in. But as you can see, it's quite easy to do, really. It's quite a, <clears throat> uh, an interesting and way of doing uh, watercolours. Now, the green, 
I quite like gold green and I didn't include that but we will put a gold green with a bit of cobalt blue on it and I used I still will use this brush and we'll just gently dab that in there like so bush there and I think we're going to have to let that dry now before we can go any further there are the chimneys though and uh, it's a bit dull actually so what I'll do is I will put the ridge tile, a couple of ridge tiles in And we'll let that dry, so I'll um, be back in a second or two while we're waiting for that to dry. Okay, well I think it's it's dry now. Um, I will put a little bit of sort of dirt there that, that was on the buildings, like so. Um, the chimneys were strange really, strange, it was a, almost a strange, strange colour really. What I think I'll do as well, I'll just give it a bit of life, just the, the pot, chimney pots, make them red and along there the green I just want to make the green a little bit brighter so I'm using cadmium yellow really just and then we'll do, put a bit of shadow on them go along okay the um, I'll just put a bit of darker color on the cornerstones to indicate that uh, they are different coloured stones in there like that and we'll put a bit of a shadow there Make that roof a bit more interesting. That one there, like so. Shadows under the figures. The shadows are coming from there. So we'll just put some shadows running along the road.
Um, right, a bit of indigo, I think. And we'll um, have a go at putting a bit of a shadow there, perhaps a bit darker. And that hedge really. It's certainly got to be a little bit darker, just there. I'll um give that a bit more texture there. Darker there. Now then, do I... I did say about the windows, but... That would be too much. Now, I'll just do the figures, and that will give you some idea of um, pen and ink, or pen and, and watercolour. That's the, that's the idea of it all. So we'll do this person with a red... a red coat on. This person here. And... Do them blue, shall we? And Okay, I think that's about it. That's given you some idea of how it is. Um, how it, it's a lot easier to do it this way, to be honest with you. Um, and um, so I hope that's been a help. And uh, don't forget to subscribe. And see you later on another episode of Phil's Art. Thanks for watching. Cheerio.